Now that you have your UI ready and you know a bit about activities, you need to get your activity to respond to user events, such as taps on the tap me button. But how do you identify the tap me button in the first place so that you can detect taps on the button? The answer, by using the button's ID. That is the ID that we assigned it a few videos back. That is indeed how we get a reference to any UI element via code. Let's see how we do this for the tap me button. Here we have our project open and I want to get a reference to my button. To do this, I need to open the main activity file. I do this by navigating to app Java and then the com.raywinderlich.timefighter folder. Once open, I add the following line of code under the line which begins the class. For now, don't worry about the keywords internal and late init. The keyword var means you're declaring a variable. A variable can contain information. Think about the following math equation. If x equals 2, what is x plus 1? The result is 3. The letter x holds a value. In our case, we're declaring a variable, only instead of calling it x, we call it tap me button. In math, variables typically contain only numbers, but in programming, we have lots of different types. We have numbers, we have text, true-false values, and so on. We want to indicate that the variable stores button data, so we put a colon after the variable name, then provide the kind of information that the variable will contain. This is called a type. You'll notice that the type is red. If you hover the mouse over the type, you'll get a tooltip which reads unresolved reference. This just means that Android Studio has no idea about buttons. We need to tell it where to find the button. An easy way to do this is to hold down the Alt key or Option key if you're on a Mac, and then press Enter or Return. You'll see we get a bunch of options. In this case, we want to import our button, so select the Import option. The import statement is added to the top of the file and the error goes away. Now let's add another reference for the text view. Like before, we use the keywords internal and late init, and then we give it a name. Finally, we set the type, and this is a type of text view. Like before, I get an error, but I put my mouse cursor over the type and I hold down Alt or Option and press Return. I select import and the error goes away. At this point, we've added two variables to our activity. We also refer to these variables as properties. These variables contain no information. We need to get that information. We've just designated the type. They contain no actual data. In onCreate, just before the closing brace, let's add some code to populate these variables. We're going to assign some data into the tap me variable, so I start my statement using the variable followed by the equal sign. Next, I call a method called findViewById. This method simply takes an ID that I give it and returns a view. But I don't want a view, I want a button. So before the parentheses, I put a less than sign followed by the word button, then the greater than sign. This tells the method, please get me a view, but when you give it to me, make sure it's a type of button. Finally, I pass in an ID for the button that I want. Notice that you refer to the IDs for each element via the R file. The R file allows us to have IDs which do not result in code changes later should the ID change for any reason. Now let's do the same for the text view. Everything looks the same except now I want a text view back instead of a button. Also, I give it a different ID. Now after this code completes, I have two properties that contain data. This code has to go after the call to set content view. That method loads the XML layout file and you will not be able to connect UI elements to properties in code until the layout is loaded.